Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of I Don't Think So. And I don't think I ever thought I would be critiquing this person that we're about to see. And here's the reason why. I've been watching the apologetics movement go into this area of gender ideology. But what I notice that they're doing is they're excluding ex-gay content and ex-gay theologians in a long slide. From what I'm watching online the last several years, they're ignoring people like myself and others who actually have a lot to say on this issue. Well, I'm not gonna say that they are getting everything wrong, but you need to listen to this thing that they just decided to do. Now here's their post. They released it on the 21st of this year, and I actually am a huge fan of cross-examine. So I'm not like beating down on the drum, but this is what they say. Yes, modern day Christmas traditions are a mishmash of Christianity, paganism, and commercialism. But there is nothing pagan in, about celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, even if your Christian nativity sets sits beside a large decorated tree does not mean the incarnation any less or uh, miraculous or worthy of celebration. Christmas matters and here's why. So one of the things that I released on this subject, and this actually infuriates me as someone who is ex-gay, when these individuals who do apologetics do this in this particular way. They will they will go out of the way to defend church tradition, even though there's church tradition blended with theology that is not godly. And they usually hardly ever suggest in strong ways about how to get that out of the church. We are starting to see people like Mike Ringer and... Uh, others starting to talk about, like Tim Burton recently talked about, or like we posted a little bit about an, an Amish individual uh, on the Messianic Jew. But the problem is, or they're not Amish, I think they're Torah observant, I can't remember, but they talk about Christmas and those type of things. When you have this double standard that they do, this is entirely hypocritical because when you apologists say don't have confusion in sexuality, but it's okay in our holiest day of the year that honors the Lord and we need to honor it. And it's okay if there's pagan practice because you know what? We're honoring the Lord. Well, you know, it's okay to have gender confusion because we're honoring the Lord. That standard doesn't really uphold. So when you're sitting there blending these ideas together, you can't have your cake and eat it too. It doesn't work that way theologically. So the events, eventually what will happen is this pagan practice that is done inside the church will be progressively addressed. So you cannot sit there and go, sexuality, eh, you have confusion, you're screwed, but let's go ahead and be sensual in our worship and devotion. That's a double standard, and that's why this made it on I Don't Think So. People do this all the time, and I think it's about time to actually start talking about a few other things. And that's really important. The largest reason is that because when you have these double standards, you have androgyny and vague lines that form. What is acceptable for one person? Okay, so a Christmas tree is a pentagram next to the manger. Is that acceptable then? That is the kind of logic that it will project. Of course, we're not suggesting that, and I don't think cross examined is expecting that or suggesting that at all. But the reality is, is that it does allow for pagan practice to be put at the same quality of Christ, the risen son of God, together. It really does open up where pagans can worship Christ together. And so I don't agree that this notion needs to be upheld and it's actually very shameful. And this is something that he should think about, which I believe he's gonna have one serious question for me if I ever see him. And this is an illogical and double standard that you can't have a sensual type of religious experience and then go to the gay community and go, give up your attractions because it's all wrong. But this is excusable. This double standard is completely ridiculous to sit there and say, ah, we like this, but you guys, eh, you need to repent. This is completely ridiculous. And it promotes an idolatry of the culture and of pagan practice where you are not going to rid that out of ministry and it promotes this type of blending and Hellenization. That is an example of what that type of idea promotes. Again, I'm not being 
harsh. I'm responding as that is truly a double standard. You can't sit there and do that in every area of your life. Say, oh, this is acceptable because it's our tradition. Your tradition promotes the blending of pagan practice with you in your homes, or you suggest that. That is really, I'm sorry, that's very ungodly. And I will not absolutely be a part of it. So because that reason, because that stance, we're not going to be a part of cross-examined. We just left the group. We were invited to it, but we're not going to be taking that stance. When you can make such definitive stances as that, where you're suggesting the blending of pagan practice and you're excusing it because you want to sit there and say, well, you're at least celebrating. Okay, well, I at least read my Bible, but I'm still with a man and I'm a guy. So you send a double standard. If that's the standard, then people should also be able to have gay partners and get into heaven. And unfortunately, I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. Go ahead and follow us for more like this video, and we will see you on the flip side. My name is Shannon, a previous gay rights activist. Until next time, and together, we can make the world a more peaceful place. Check out our new podcast, by the way. If you like this reel and you are going to like several others, we'll actually talk in depth on this TikTok on Spotify. So you're not going to want to miss that. We will talk in depth about the ramifications of these type of things and the Babylon system in our upcoming podcast of I Don't Think So later this year. And because of the content that it made, it probably will make charismatic chaos because it sensationalizes this moment. And we're not going to sit there and have anything to do with this type of ideology.